Welcome to the SIDCast. It's Sid Finkelstein, and I'm here today with Kevin Demoff. Hey, Kevin. How are you, Sid? I'm good. I'm good. You know, the game-changing hire that we made for the Rams was Sean McVay, whose grandfather was Bill Walsh's partner at the 49ers. Yeah, but building. what was so interesting about Sean, um, and bring back to Bill Walsh and where you see that influence on Sean is, you know, after he, Sean built an amazing coaching staff, uh, in his first year, despite being 30 years old. Wow. And, so, and so within two years of Sean McVay being hired as the youngest head coach in NFL history, he already has two head coaches mm-hmm. from under his tree, both of whom got their jobs because like Bill Wall, Sean was willing to buck current NFL trends and allow his people to interview for jobs that he could block. Work. We are uh, one of the a few, if not the only NFL teams that are majority female in terms of staff. And to see, you know, our working mothers have to balance, you know, life at home and life at work has certainly been eye-opening to me, even though I thought we were pretty good about boundaries and rules and giving them flexibility. uh, I am, you know, in awe of what they pull off and then certainly still seeking ways we can give them greater freedom now that you see this lends into their lives on a, on a daily basis. And one of the things that, that we really focus on as an organization is not hiring from within sports. Um, for a lot of our position, we look for people who love sports and are passionate about it, but come from other backgrounds and under, in other industries so that we can expand our, you know, our scope, our horizon and understanding you know, of the world. And you know, the NFL is a different animal because and I think it gets back to what we were talking about initially when we we're talking about the popularity of the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. So much of that popularity is around people watching these players play college football. Then they watch them go to the combine and work out on TV and fans and commentators really base their decisions and their evaluations of those players around those aspects that they can see, but not by what they can't measure. I think that's right. Right. I mean, you're not going to take a player who is tremendously bright and personable and a captain if they can't play. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. but I think the, I would say the cover charge to being drafted by the Rams is to be gifted physically and to make sure that you can fit into the, what our coaches expect from that position, you know, and, and even there we are trying to use analytics to, to get a better understanding of, how these players will perform at the next level are there. And ultimately, you know, no different than hiring into an organization. If you hire someone who doesn't have the requisite skill set to succeed in your building, mm-hmm. whatever that is, you know, there's no reason to bring them in. And that's true, whether you're a marketing firm, a sales culture, a tech firm, if you bring someone in who's super talented, but doesn't fit your culture and does not have the ability to do what is most important within your culture, they're probably not going to be a fit. Right, right. You know, Aaron Rodgers started at a junior college yeah. for going to Cal. So, you know, these guys grow and develop, you know, and it's such a formative time in their life going from 18, you know, to, to 21. And it is different from a place like the NBA where people come straight from high school and have success, you know, the physical maturity, the skill set, even in baseball, you see that, you know, a little bit differently. So I think if you were to say right now, what top executives, you know, what were they like as seniors in high school? (laughs) You know, there's a lot of formative development that comes from college, your first job, an MBA program, ultimately to, to where you land. And look, that's a lot of the hit and miss of, of the NFL draft. Right. So I think that ultimately gets to the second point of, you know, in terms of the pipeline for minority coaches, uh, are we giving them the opportunities to be promoted? Are we putting them into the right places? And I think the real emphasis right now is on, you know, so many coaches right now are coming from the offensive side of the ball. Um, and that has been, a you know, for better or for worse, a historically, you know, wider coaching pool than diverse. Um, historically, diverse coaching pool tend to be more on the defensive side of the ball. And the big push right now in the NFL is how do we change? But the other thing that we need to do in the NFL, we are bad at developing head coaches. When you look at the turnover in the NFL in head coaches, we are terrible at hiring. Like any other industry, if you said you had a, you know, 
less than 50% hit rate in hiring CEOs, if you were a headhunter for you'd be fired. <laughs> right. And so I think one of the problems, that, and I think this is where I think it's a struggle when you look minority, since we're not good at it, it doesn't seem right that minorities are not getting the same opportunities as non minorities. 21 year old uh, Kevin, um, and you were able to go back in time and sit next to him. Uh, what would you say? You lean over to him and say, if there's one thing you want to do or not do, or there's something you want to know about the world, or if there's one bit of advice I have for you, what, what would that be? Advice for yourself? Don't be afraid of risky choices. Mm-hmm. You know, there is no linear path to success or happiness anywhere in the world. And, you know, when the jobs that seem the worst are probably the best opportunity. I think the advice I always have, the things that seem riskiest um, are, you know, that way. And I, the advice, it's funny you pick 21-year-old Kevin, 20-year-old Kevin, uh, who met my wife in Hanover as a sophomore <laughs> um, at Dartmouth. She was, you know, the first person I dated who I was kind of like, I don't think this is going to go anywhere necessarily, but, we'll, you know, and here we are. You know, 24, January will be 24 years since we started dating at Dartmouth. Kevin, Kevin Demoff, what a great conversation. I feel like we could go another hour. We've gone far past one hour, in fact. Uh, but it's been really, uh, really interesting. Thank you. Thanks so much for being on the SIDCast. Good luck this uh, season keeping uh, COVID, COVID free. And good luck to the, to the Rams.